Yeah, good morning. Good morning mm. Today we'll go for the next module. That is module five. Module five. See the module three and four is related to turbine. That is power generating machines. Steam module three we studied about the steam turbine. It is generating the power. And then module four we have studied about hydraulic turbine. In that also we see that the power is generated. But in the module five what we are going to do is in the module five we are going to study about the power absorbing machines. That means if I give the power then what will happen? The turbine central what how they are going to rotate with the help of the steam energy or hydraulic energy. If I supply that high speed sorry high energy steam or high energy hydraulic uh, fluid then what will happen? If it is ejecting on the blade it will start rotating the blade and then power is generated. But in this chapter, in this module, what we are going to do is we are reversing the operation. That means we are forcefully supplying the electricity. With the supplying of the electricity, the blades will rotate. Because of the rotation of the blades, the fluid will pressurize. Means, uh, have you seen the fans? Have you seen the fan? What is the function of a fan? Function of a fan or how it is going to work? You are going to give the electricity for the fan. Because of that supplied electricity, the fan starts rotating. Because of rotation of the fan or the blades, what will happen? The air will try to pressurize or will try to push the air so that it will feel comfortable, right? So these are all called as power absorbing machines. Another example for power absorbing machine is you can take centrifugal pump in your home. In your home to deliver a water from the lower level to the overhead tank. What is the machine you used? Anyone can answer? In your home, to take the water from sump to the overhead tank, what will switch on? Can anyone? Will switch on? Hello? Submersible. submersible pump, right. Submersible pump, in generally we will call it as pump. We will switch on the pump. That means we are supplying the electricity for the pump. If the electricity is supplied for the pump, the pump starts rotating. Because of rotation of the pump, the blades will, blades will also rotate. Because of the rotation of the blades, water which is there at the lower level, water which is there in the sump, will try to deliver to the overhead tank. That means the energy of the water is increased with the help of this power absorbing machines. Remember, don't get confused with the power generating and power absorbing machines. In power generating machine, the output is electricity. In power absorbing machine, the output is intended work, but the input is electricity. Okay. So I'll present the screen and I'll give the introduction part of this uh, centrifugal pump or power absorbing machine. Then I'll proceed for the problems only. Can you all see the screen? Can you all see the screen? Anybody having doubt regarding the module 4 that is hydraulic turbines? Any of the problems? Because we have studied about three turbines there, three types of hydraulic turbine: Elton, Francis, and Kaplan. If no doubt, I'll proceed for this module, centrifugal pump. Second, this is this is the course outcome. Okay, where we are going to use the Euler's apply the Euler's turbine equation and analyze. Energy transfer pump from compressor turbines on a one day basis. Yeah, this is the module four. In the module four, there are two pump, two chapters. This entire module four is corresponding to power consuming machines, or it is also called as power absorbing machines, where power is input for these machines. Okay, so it is con considered as power consuming machines. In that, according to your syllabus, there are two. Uh, chapters. One is a centrifugal pump and another is centrifugal compressor. See in this centrifugal pump, both the working and constructions are same. What is the difference? In the centrifugal pump, the working fluid is water. 
but in the centrifugal compressor the working fluid is air that is the only difference between these two chapters working fluid is water and working fluid is air that is the only difference between these two chapters in the centrifugal pump and centrifugal compressor under the module for or power of consuming machines so here we are going to study about classification of centrifugal pump parts of the centrifugal pump different heads of the centrifugal pump efficiency of centrifugal pump theoretical head relationship of centrifugal pump minimum speed for starting of the flow maximum suction lift net positive suction head cavitation need for priming pumps arranged in series pumps arranged in parallel and problems so in this module what i am going to do is i am not going to take up this chapter i'll tell you what is the reason because even though the working of these two are same pumps and compressor but the fluid is different here we are going to study about hydraulic that is water here we are going to study about the air okay again uh, concept of thermodynamics needs to be explained here so that i will take up this chapter at the end for time being uh, in the module 4 under the power consume consuming machines i will take up only centrifugal pump as this is working under the working fluid for this is water because you already know how to solve the problems if the working fluid is water you know how to solve the problem but if it is a centrifugal compressor you need to consider the temperature also okay so thermodynamics has to be explained before doing this so that i'll take up for time being the centrifugal pump in detail can all of you see this ppt yes sir hello okay okay see here power consuming machine we are going to deal with so classification of power consuming machines not only these two you can tell us fan fan is also power consuming machine you can tell us heater room heater blower vacuum cleaner all those are called as power consuming machines or grinders mixer all those things are power consuming machines it means any machines which if you are supplying a power to that then it is called as power consuming machine any machine which you are taking power from that then it is called as power generating machines can anyone name any three power generating machines other than steam and hydraulic turbines power generating machines so that means the output should be electric power or mechanical work can you tell anyone engines huh engines sir ic okay. okay ic engine where we are going to get the electricity outside or a power rotation of the shaft next dc generators huh dc and ac generators ah generators very good next actuators actuators no actuators it is consuming the power no because you are supplying the power it is going to actuate or lift the load and all next other than that one best example is windmill have you seen the windmill yes sir so what is the function of the windmill the energy from the air which is flowing it is utilized to rotate the blades of the windmill once the blades of the windmill is rotated electricity is generated correct yes sir so those are all called as a uh, power generating machines but power consuming machines can you tell you can tell plenty of this because in day to day life you are you are seeing many machines where uh, so windmill can be um, again converted into ac and dc generators itself yeah that's all finally it is going to couple to the generator so that i have agreed that generator okay sir then any other any other power consuming machines other than these two centrifugal pump centrifugal compressor any machine which you are going to supply the power for any intended work usually hence it is a turbo machines you concentrate only on the rotating machines any rotating machine huh? motor motor yeah very good motor we are going to supply the power to the motor because of the supply of the power to the motor then what will happen the end of the motor is connected to any blades right either it may be fan or it may be of uh, 
uh, uh, blades like that. So because of the supply power supply to the motor, the blades will rotate because of the rotation of the blade. It will, uh, for example, if it is a fan, what will happen? It will pressurize the air and will send back to you. It, if it is a heater, like that means depending upon the application, you can tell plenty of power consuming machines. In day to day life, you are going to see plenty of power consuming machines rather than power generating machines, right? Power generating are only few, you can tell only few. That is, uh, as you told, a generator. In, in, instead of telling a generator, I'll try to call it as any machine which is having a blade. Those things I'll concentrate because it's a turbo machine subject, I'll concentrate on those things. So, turbines. Either it may be hydraulic, steam, or a gas turbine. Even a gas turbine is also considered as power generating machine. Okay? Like that. Those things you can call it as power generating. Power consuming, you can see plenty. And then power centrifugal compressor is also a power, consume, power consuming machine. But the working fluid is air here. That is the only difference between these two chapters. Okay. Again, this, this is a slide I have shown in that hydraulic turbine chapter also. Again, I'll repeat this. What do you mean by hydraulic machine? Hydraulic machines means which converts hydraulic energy into mechanical energy or mechanical to hydraulic energy. That is considered as hydraulic machines. In that again, there are two classification. One is turbine or you can instead of turbine, you can call it as power generating machines. Sorry. Power generating machines, power absorbing machines. What is a power generating machines do? See, a machines which convert hydraulic energy Another way it is called as energy possessed by the water into mechanical energy. So these are all called as power generating machines. Instead of water, if I put gas, then it will become, it will become a gas turbine. Instead of water, if I put a steam, then it will become a steam turbine. Understood? So any machine which utilizes the hydraulic energy or a fluid energy to the rotation of the shaft, they are considered as power generating machines. So based on the input, you can call it as different. I will draw one figure and I will show you. And then power con power absorbing machines. What are all the power absorbing machines which uses the mechanical energy or electricity which we are supplying to hydraulic energy or to the increase the pressure of the fluid? So they are called as power absorbing machines. You can classify here. I give only one name: turbine. You can give plenty names here: steam turbine, hydraulic turbine, gas turbine, windmill for power generating. And here pump. Compressor, fan, and, and room heater, like that, you can give a uh, plenty of examples for this also for power absorbing machines. Uh, this is the figure of a centrifugal pump. Have you seen anywhere? Anyone seen? Have you, have you gone through this arrangement anywhere? Centrifugal pump. Most of you have seen, I guess. Yes. Correct, no? You. Any, I think probably uh, in most of the houses presently, in, the, in I think uh, from past one decade, almost most of the houses you can see this type of centrifugal pumps to lift the water from the sump to the over a tank. As this is called a centrifugal pump, okay. Yeah, presently, what they are doing, that they are doing is this centrifugal pump. It is eliminated. But they are using a submersible pump. It is improved version of the centrifugal pump only. Okay. Here you can see separate motor and the pump. This is a pump part and this is a motor part. And here also this is a motor and this is the pump. You can see these two separately. But presently, in, in uh, if you go and ask to get a pump, then they, what they will do? They will not give this type of pump in the present days. What they will do? This two will be in a single mold, like a submersible pump. That those things they will give you. That is the only difference. But the working principle of that pump as well as this is same. We are not concentrating on this motor. This motor is only supplying the electricity. If I supply the electricity, the shaft will rotate. Here, can you see the small shaft? This this shaft will rotate. The shaft will be connected to the center of this pump. This pump. So that will rotate and then lift the water. Where the water enters here? Can anyone, anyone tell? Where the water enters in this pump? Entry of the water. Always entry of the water is from the center. Then exit of the water is from this above. So from here it is going to discharge to the overhead tank. Here entry of the water is from the center. 
and it is going to discharge through the this pipe to the overhead tank. So this arrangement is called as radial outward flow machine. That means a centrifugal pumps are radial outward flow machines. Why it is called as radial outward flow? Water enters to the center first, then it goes outside radially outward. So this is called radial outward flow machine. Make a note of this. But in Francis turbine, what will happen? It looks like same thing, but the water enters from the top and it enters to this, do its work, leaves the water from here. That is called a radial inward flow. Francis turbine is a radial inward flow machine and the centrifugal pump is radial outward flow machine. Clear? Yes. You can write, you can write that somewhere. It is very, very important. What do you mean by radial inward flow? Radial outward flow. Radial inward flow means water flow from outside to the center. That is a Francis turbine. Radial outward means water enters from the center. It do its work and then it go outside. So it is called as radial outward flow. The example for this is centrifugal pump. So again, the best example, best definition for the centrifugal pumps you can read this. If the mechanical energy is converted to pressure energy by means of centrifugal force, the machine is called as centrifugal pump. Like that, you can give plenty of definitions. Okay, plenty of definitions for centrifugal pump you can give. Here I give one simple example, simple definition. If the mechanical energy is converted, what is the mechanical energy here? Rotation of the shaft. If the rotation of the shaft is converted to pressure energy, by means of centrifugal force, then that machine is called as centrifugal pump. It acts radially outward direction exactly opposite to the reaction turbine. Instead of reaction, for your better understanding, there I can mention as Francis turbine. Okay. Francis turbine. Any doubts in this? If anybody is having a doubt, you can ask me. The key word in this is centrifugal force for the definition. Centrifugal force and this mechanical energy. Anybody having doubts, you can ask me. So that will clarify the doubts. If no, I'll proceed further. Okay. Anybody having doubts? Can you see? Hello? Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Okay. See, in uh, turbine, what will happen? It is Francis. And here, centrifugal pump. Okay. So, this is the figure for this. Just rough figure I'll draw. I'll draw on you. Okay. So this is motor and this is pump. And here also I'll draw the same picture. Turbine. This is you are going to call it as generator. 
ओके एंट्री ऑफ वाटर आउटलेट एंट्री ऑफ वाटर विल टेक्स प्लेस हियर एंड आउटलेट फ्रॉम द सेंटर फॉर द टर्बाइन बट कमिंग टू द पंप this is the inlet of water inlet and outlet will be like this so you can see the inlet and outlet for turbine the francis turbine and the pump is just opposite to each other okay and here generator is used to generate the electricity here motor is used to give the electricity and this is shaft here also shaft okay <coughs> So what will happen now? I'll draw another view of the centrifugal pump. This is the view of this centrifugal pump. Again, this is the view of Francis turbine. It looks like same, but pump is smaller in size. That's all. Francis turbine, and this is the blade. And here also. is all the bleach okay so what will happen water enters from this is called penstock in francis turbine water enters from penstock then it moves it enters the blade and then all the water which is supplied will enter to the center of the blade center of this turbine then it will discharge through a tube called draft tube okay it is discharge this is the arrangement for the francis turbine but for centrifugal pump what will happen we are giving the electricity first means we are supplying the electricity hence the shaft is going to rotate hence the shaft is going to rotate and the water inlet will be connected to the center here this is the inlet portion this is water inlet because of this rotation what will happen a centrifugal force will create and then because of the force hence the water is connected to this inlet it will try to move outward and so in other words the water will try to move towards outward then it will escape from this pipe this is called as delivery pipe this is called suction clear what will happen in the centrifugal pump one uh, this turbine in the turbine the water enters from the penstock to the i or the center of the turbine like this but here it is moving outward because of the centrifugal force how the force is created the as the shaft is rotating and then fluid is entered to the fluid is attached the inlet of the fluid is attached to the center of this pump because of that the water tries to move outward and then it is going to discharge through the delivery pipe and this is connected to overhead tank this pipe is connected to the overhead tank so this is the working of the turbine as well as centrifugal pump this is smaller in size Size. If you want to talk about size, and this is power generating machine. This is power consuming machine, and this is called inward flow system. This is called. Can you see the screen? Hello. Yes, sir. Just a moment. Can I? Is that good?
Okay. Can you see the cursor? Can you see the cursor? Yes, sir. Okay. See here, this is considered as this is considered as power generating and it is called as radial inward flow machine. And this pump is considered as radial outward flow machine. Okay. So with this two are the important figure for you to understand how the water flow takes place in turbine as well as in uh, the pump. Because of what force the water is going to discharge in the pump because of the centrifugal force and the inlet is connected to the center as the turbine rotates, as the blades rotate, it will try to move, it will try to push the water outside, outward. Okay. Again, I'm coming back for the theory. So how the type, the what are the different types of pumps? These are all the types of pumps, or you can tell us classification of the pumps. Centrifugal pump, axial pump, special effect pumps, that is called as mixed effect, that is centrifugal and axial. Displacement pump, under that rotary, gear, low, vane, screw. These are all the different types of pumps, or the classification of the pumps. Under the reciprocatory, piston, plunger, and diaphragm pump, we can call what is our interest is our interest is to only concentrate on the centrifugal pump here i have shown all the different types of pumps the major important thing to concentrate here is only on the centrifugal pump is it clear these are all the different types of pumps available in that centrifugal pump is major uh, thing we are going to study in this module see this is the uh, Diagram of centrifugal pump in inner part of the centrifugal pump. So first here, what we'll do? This is the shaft or the center portion of the pump, or this is also called as suction I. Suction I. So this at this location, the pipe is connected. One end of the pipe is dipped inside the sump, and other end of the pipe is connected to the center portion of the pump, or it is also called as I. So once, as soon as this blade starts rotating, as soon as the blade starts rotating, these are all called as an impeller or a vane or a blade. Can you see this shape? So once the shaft, as the shaft is connected to the motor, if we switch on the motor, the shaft will start rotating. Okay, and then suction will create. And the pipe is connected to the sum. Because of the suction created, the water will try to enter to the center of this pump that is called as I. Okay. And then because of the rotation of the blade, a centrifuge, because of the centrifugal force created, water will try to move from the center to the outside. From center to the outside. So it is called as the outward flow machine. And as soon as water, as the water moving from center to the outside, it will accumulate in this casing, in this outer portion that is called as casing. What is the name of the casing? It is called as volute casing. There are, there are different types of casing. Don't worry about the volute. You remember, you remember only about the casings because in this, there are three types of casings. We'll study about that. Only you just remember about the casing. Okay. Then from the casing, the water enters to this pipe. This is called as discharge pipe or it is also called as delivery pipe. Delivery pipe. So these are all the different parts of centrifugal pump. Is it clear? Impeller, it is also called as a vane or a blade. The other name for centrifugal pump is radial outward flow machine. Major parts of the centrifugal pump, they will ask this. Means as per the syllabus, this is the important thing what it is going to ask. But these are all re required. What are the things I explained till now? They are all required to better understanding for solving the problem as well as to differentiate between the Francis turbine as well as this pump. But they will ask these kind of questions. Explain the working of each part or explain the working of centrifugal pump with the parts. See, this is the figure it is expected to draw an exam. Okay. This is called as a suction pipe. Can you see here? 
suction pipe where the suction pipe is dipped inside the sump this is the sump and before the sump manage at the beginning of the suction pipe there is some can you see this mesh type structure the mesh type structure that is called foot wall or just foot wall and strainer foot wall means it allows or it restricts the water to flow in only one direction means the water will flow only in upward direction in the reverse direction will not flow it will restrict so that is called as a foot wall one direction wall and this strainer is uh, it avoids the foreign particles to enter to the centrifugal pump okay it cleans the mesh only a clean water will enter to the it like it like it is like a mesh like structure any foreign particles or debris won't enter to the suction pipe only that is a function of this strainer but foot wall function is to restrict the water flow in only one direction that is in upward direction not in the reverse so foot wall and strainer you can see at the beginning or at the one end of the suction pipe and this suction pipe is dipped inside the sump and other end of the suction pipe is connected to the center portion of the centrifugal pump what is the name of this portion it is called as eye of the pump it is called as eye of pump eye of pump and this are all called as this we can call it as impeller this is called as an impeller or vanes impeller or vanes because of the centrifugal force created by this impeller the water entered at the center will try to push outside it will try to go outside from center to the tip of the bridge and because of this casing you can see here shape of the casing this is called as a casing and then from the casing the water enters to the delivery pipe this is a delivery valve means to control the delivery we can uh, operate this valve and then the delivery of the water takes place from this delivery pipe this is the different parts of the centrifugal pump the, i'll tell once again what all the parts we should explain we should explain about foot wall and strainer suction pipe i impeller casing and delivery pipe these are all the different parts you should explain if it is asked to explain the working of each parts of a centrifugal pump those things i have given here you should explain in detail about the impeller casing suction pipe foot wall strainer and delivery pipe any doubts in this figure hello and the same figure you you might know i think probably you have drawn in the fluid mechanics lab also there you can see the working of this how we are going to use the valve centrifugal pump how the arrangement is made everything you can see in this uh, fluid mechanics lab same figure you have drawn there also see the shape of the blade or impeller this impeller i showed you the impeller here no how it will be original impeller this is a line diagram the actual impeller is like this can you see if i remove the centrifugal pump actual impeller will look like this water enters to this center portion that is called as an i i of the centrifugal pump because of the force created centrifugal force created water moves through this spacing to the towards the outside can you see the spacing here towards this spacing water enters to the outside because of the centrifugal force created because of rotation of the shaft this is an actual picture of an impeller of a centrifugal pump so how we are going to define this impeller it is a rotating part this impeller is a rotating part of a centrifugal pump okay then it consists of series of backward curved vanes you remember this backward curved vanes this is also important word because in second module they will tell only a hydraulic machine having a backward curved vanes that means you should know what you mean by backward curved vanes it corresponds to centrifugal pump backward curved vanes are corresponds to centrifugal pump remember this word the impeller is mounted on the shaft where is the shaft in this so here at the center you can see the shaft it is mounted on the shaft on the direct which in turn connected to the electric motor this shaft is connected to the electric motor so this is the impeller actually figure of impeller so this is a different types of impeller this is open type see this is open type there is no uh, material here right there is no solid body so we can call it as open type impeller so this is a semi open type impeller semi open type means at the base everywhere 
there will be a metal plate and then at the top you can see the bleach impeller so that will be called a semi open type and other type is closed impeller closed impeller means the top and bottom of this blades will be covered with one blade one uh, plate so that you cannot see the blades but inside the whatever the function it is going to do uh, without covering and with covering both are same so this those are called as these are those are called as closed impeller semi open impeller fully open impeller and closed impeller can i tell which category it falls this figure falls in which category <coughs> this figure falls in which category okay. Huh? Okay. Fully open impeller. Fully open impeller. We'll use this. See, there is an application for this. There is application. This type of centrifugal pump or impeller is used in for some application. This is used in some application, and this is used in some application. So, what are all the applications here? This impeller, the fully open impeller, is used if there is any, uh, for example, drainages and all. They will clean, no. They will clean the. They will remove the drainage or any uh, sludge material. So, if you want to remove the sludge content of the fluid, then what will do? Will do? They will use this type of centrifugal pumps. Okay. If it is clean water in the laboratory, we will use this type of impellers. It is closed completely. Okay. In between, if it is not so clean, if it is not so the uh, sludge is having, then semi-open type of impeller is used. Depending upon the application, this impellers will be used. So again, different types of impellers you can see here. So this is open type, semi-open type, closed type. This is also closed type. This is open type. This is also open type. This is also open type. Based on the application, based on the application, the impeller shapes will be different. Okay. So in in the impeller type, there are three major types. One is open, semi-open, and closed. In the closed. Single section, double section. That means both the sides. Here, it is closed on both the sides, but the suction takes place on only one side. But here, the blades are closed on both the sides, but the suction takes place on both the sides. So it is called as double section closed type, and a non-clogging axial flow, mixed flow. This is called mixed flow, axial flow, and a non-clogging flow, non-clogging impeller. These are all the types of the impeller. in that majorly you should concentrate on open side semi open type and closed type these three are the important but everything i included here as per the syllabus these three are important they will ask you to draw a neat figure of open type semi open type or closed type impeller so that you should draw this figure open type semi open type closed type impeller is it clear then coming to the casing can you see the casing here so this is the casing this is the casing i told there are different types of casings right different types of casings we'll explain that now see the casing here just avoid the water too means it is it is an air tight casing mm, yeah you can see here the casing is a spiral type in which area of the flow increases gradually area of the flow increases gradually then the casing of a centrifugal pump and reaction turbine is similar instead of reaction i'll call it as francis for your better understanding yeah i have seen the francis turbine casing right casing in centrifugal pump and the francis turbine it is almost similar there is no change in the casing shape of the casing and it is an air tight casing surrounded by the impeller surrounded the impeller it is an air tight casing this is important to create air tight this casing is used and casing helps in conversion of kinetic energy of the water discharge at outlet is converted to pressure energy of the water that means its function is to convert the kinetic energy of the water into pressure energy of the water then there are generally three types of casing volute casing vortex casing and diffuser casing this is important okay they will ask you to define about means uh, draw a neat figure of casings different casings there are three types of casings usually the shape of the casing is this is spiral shape of the case is spiral and the area of the flow increases that is true in all the three cases but the casings are small variation they are done and it is called as volute casing vortex casing and diffuser casing volute vortex and diffuser uh, can you see the figure of the casing here 
how the casing will be the so this is a open it is open one impeller is fixed here and it will be closed can you see how the casing will be done so this is a case casing spiral casing inside how it will be and this is about volute casing this is about volute casing the velocity of the flow decreases hence the increase in the pressure takes place so why the pressure is increased and velocity is reduced you can see the figure here you can see this figure area of this casing the area between the gap between the casing and the blade it goes on increases so because of this pressure increases and the velocity decreases so the same thing i written here volute casing the velocity of the flow decreases and the increase in the pressure takes place due to this type of casing the efficiency of the pump increases slightly because of this volute casing a small increment in the efficiency has observed instead of the simple spiral casing then further improvement is done with the vortex casing with the vortex casing a small further more increment has been observed in the efficiency what is that if a circular chamber is introduced between the casing and the impeller then the type of casing is known as vortex casing so in, instead of directly connecting this water to you know heating of the water takes place directly from the blade to the uh, uh, this spiral casing instead of that if i use this one more ring like structure or a circular chamber then it is called as a vortex casing i will show you the video of this video of all those casings volute vortex and uh, spiral casings okay by introducing this casing the losses due to eddies reduces and thus efficiency is increased where it is in the eddy formation compared to volute casing here there is no ring here so that what will happen whatever the inter, whatever the water it is entering it will directly enter to the this casing so that there may be a chances of formation of eddies but here because of this ring eddy formation will be reduced so that efficiency is more this is one more casing that is casing with guide blades or it is also called as diffuser casing casing it's along with the casing if i add up the guide blades these guide blades will be attached to the casing in that case what will happen a smooth outlet of the water takes place because of that smooth outlet or zero eddy formation efficiency of the pump will be increased see here here the impeller is surrounded by a series of guided blades as the impeller the same shape of the impeller the guide blades will be attached so that the eddy formation whatever the water which is coming out it will be with non turbulence smoothly it will come out and it will be discharged so that the efficiency of this pump will be increased that's what without shock water will go outside and efficiency can be higher compared to the earlier two types of case okay this is about this is the figure of casing volute casing see there is no ring vortex casing there is an intermediate ring between the casing and the impeller and diffuser casing instead of simply a ring the ring is removed and a guide blades are attached this is a figure of the diffuser casing what will happen here the formation of eddies are more here it is reduced here it is completely eliminated because of this guide blade so that efficiency goes on increases so these are all the three types of casings in centrifugal pump this this three figures they will ask you they will ask you to draw the parts of centrifugal pump along with explanation and these three casings clear so further i'll take up in the next uh, further parts it is delivery pipe suction pipe foot wall strainers all those things i'll take in the next class and to your attendance sai sumant thank you abhishek yes sir abhishek narayana abhishek narayana आदर्श आदर्श अजय अक्रम अक्षय आलाप प्रेजेंस सर अंकित अशिदेश प्रेजेंस सर विभान चिन्मय प्रेजेंस सर चंदन शरीष्मा Present sir. Tarshan. Present sir. Hiba. Hiba. Govindraj. Present sir. Jayant. Present sir. Pushottam. 
Karamjit, Kartikia, Present Sir, Kiran, Mastanula, Maisi Nomar, Sharan, Narendra, Narendra, Nihal, Yes Sir, Nikhil, Nimal Vagmesh, Nimal Vagmesh, Nitin, Nitin, Rajwal, Prayag, Yes, sir. Uh, Prince, Yes, sir. Prince, Yes, sir. Rakshit, Yes, sir. Rishi, Rishi, Sandeep, Sanjay Goda, Yes, sir. Sanjay Yen, Yes, sir. Satish, Saurabh? Yes, sir. Shivam? Yes, sir. Shivam Sundriya? Yes, sir. Shravan? Yes, sir, brother. Srinidhi? Siddharth? Siddharth R? Sudip? Sunil? Tarun? Yes, sir. Vinay? Present, sir. Vipin? Yes, sir. Vivek, Vivek, Milan, Pranayla, Saksham Singh, Present, sir. Saksham Singh, Akshat, Present, sir. Chaitanya, Yes, sir. Mahesh, Nishant, Ramesh, Shishank, Sotrik Rai, Present, sir. Shivatsan. Present, sir. Madan Kumar. Manu. Ganesh. Manu. Ganesh. Manu, this is the fourth class you are attending out of 43. Sumant. Sumant. Vijay Kumar? Yes, sir. Rahir? Present, sir. Trishi? Mahimaraj? Okay. Thank you.